All right, guys. Are you ready for my full arena card review for the United and Stormwind mini set? Poggers in the chat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just a couple of things to note about, about the, uh, the review. We're going to go with a scale from one to five, five being the best, uh, the best possible card and three, which is like average. We're going to set as a three mana, three, four. I I've slid the scale around a little bit because, you know, power level has gone up so much. Um, so yeah, it, but I feel like a three being a three mana, three, four is kind of a, a, of a good, a good, uh, good point. Okay. I've, I'm not entirely sure the order we're going to go in here because uh, the directly pulling the images from the Hearthstone website's a little a little scuffed because it's harder to sort from them. Uh, but I think it's by class, so we'll uh, we'll do our best to you know let you know what what class we're. Hopefully, we can figure it out based on the 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 background. Sometimes I, I mix up you know hunter and demon. Anyhow, let's do it. Starting with the crows nest lookout and we're starting out with a poggers chat so crow's nest lookout this is a demon hunter card three mana two two uh demon tag battle cry deal two damage to the left and right most enemy minions so one thing i just want to check with you guys because you guys know everything chat knows everything this does mean, like the legendary card, if there's only one minion, it hits the minion for four, correct? Which is which makes it even more insane, right? Yeah. So I think this card is a five. What up? Coming out of the gates with a five. And you guys might be like, yeah, right, Dreads. Already a five? I mean, the thing is, you don't even have to outcast it, right? Like, you, the, the, the legendary, I, I forget that, guys, help me out with the name of the legendary. The three, four that goes boom, boom on either side, right? That has to at least be, be outcast to get the immune effect. This, you, it can be anywhere. Kurtrus, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, the, this, this one, you can just play it from anywhere in hand, and it's just insane. So, yeah, this card's broken. Absolutely broken uh, for, for Arena. And it's it's you're gonna see a lot of it, right? It's common. Yeah. Okay. What if you have to tempo it? I mean, just have another three drop in hand. Don't just don't tempo it, okay? If you if you have to tempo it, you're winning anyways. Chat, all right. Okay. Next card, need for greed. This is another demon hunter card. Uh, five mana, tradable. Draw three cards. If drawn this turn, this costs three. All right, so worst case, it's a five mana draw three, which isn't that bad. Like, Demon Hunters have better ways to draw, but it's not that bad. Um, obviously, the idea is that you, you trade it. Like, there's a few cards like this where you basically get a benefit from trading it back in. Um, this one, the benefit is if you top deck it, then you could play an arcane Analyst that draws you one additional card, right? Um, so I, I think the, the play with most of these cards will be if you have the free mana, most of the time you will trade it for, for the upside. This one, maybe not as much though, because, you know, if you need cards and, you know, you just play it, pay it for five mana. I think it's good. I think it's above average. I don't think it's like insane. The tradable, the tradable definitely adds something to it. Because, you know, sometimes you're, it's just too slow, but you can always pin, uh, spend one mana to, to swap it. I feel like it's like a 3.5 on this one. It's I think it's a, between a, a 3.5 and a 4. But um, I think I think I'm going to go with a, with a 3.5. Because how often will you be able to play it for 3 mana, right? If you play it for 3 mana, it's like a 4.5, right? But if you play it for 5 mana, it's 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 only it's only okay. Uh, is this based on Arena? Someone in chat asked. Yeah, all of these these ratings are just for Arena. Yep. All right. Proving Grounds, another Demon Hunter card. 
six mana. Stay with me here. Summon two minions from your deck. They fight. What? What the hell is this? Can someone with constructed knowledge explain to me what the idea is here? There must be some kind of constructed combo or something where this is supposed to be insane, right? I don't know. Is it just a meme card? Death rattles? <laughs> okay, you still have to pay six mana for it, though. Six mana. Pull an Antane? Okay, okay, I guess. Does that wait? Does that work? So if it's dormant, they don't fight. Is that how it is? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for Arena, it's it's a one, so I don't want to dwell on it too much. It's it's a big fat one in, in Arena. <laughs> All right. On to Druid. On to Druid. Druid of the Reef. It's a one mana one one, but the stats on it don't really matter because it's a it's one of those transform cards. So choose one, transform into a three one shark with rush or a one three turtle with taunt. This card's insane, absolutely insane. Like I think ninety percent of the time in arena you'll be using it for the rush, um, because one mana deal three is is just is just nutty. I mean we have we have the one mana two one, and then we have the two mana. Uh, three three damage rush and both of them are very good in arena so this is better than both of those cards um you know it, it's it's either it's between like a four and a 4.5 for me I, I wouldn't say it's a it's a five a five star card i feel like the the flexibility of also being able to play it for a taunt though is pretty nice um I, i'm gonna go high on this one too i really like cards like this I'm gonna go 4.5. Just being able to like kill your opponent's two drop for one mana and then develop something is so strong. So I think it's gonna be very, very good. All right. Jerry Rig Carpenter. So two mana, two, one. Wow, pirate. I feel like there are many druids, druid pirate cards. Am I crazy? Uh, battle cry draw a choose one spell and split it okay so what are the good choose one cards for this now well it's a choose one spell not not cards like wh what is even in right now power of the wild yeah yeah power of the wild is great with it because i mean when i look at this card i just think of wrath you know like because because there, there used to be another card i forget the the name but um when you played a two, was it, uh, oh, I can't, it's a two, three. I can't remember the name of it now, but it, it would let, when you played a card, you got a copy of each one into your hand. Do you guys know the card I'm talking about? So I just remember it being insane with wrath because you would, you would get like each of them into your hand. Yeah. Keeper, keeper still address. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. But now that wrath is gone, I'm like uh, Jade idol is the best. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, maybe, right. I guess like, it, you know, maybe, Okay. Not the best, but that could be a good a good meme. Split means you get two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will have, and it, but it won't be a choose one, right? So like it will be a if it, if we talk about power of the wild, you get a, a, a two mana three two and a two mana buff board, uh, buff your board, right? Crystal power, nourish, feral rage are all in. Okay. I mean, obviously, like you need one of these spells in it. So this is a card that's hard to give an overall grade to because. If you don't have those cards in it, it's, it's terrible, right? It's like unpickable. But if you do have just like two, I would say it's quite good. All right. I'm going to go like a medium score. I feel like like a th three might actually be a little bit high. I don't know how likely you are to get a choose one. I'm going to go with a, th with a three, but it really depends. It, it, like if you're easily able to get one, the, the card's great. It's basically draw two. Um, a two minute two one draw two, but depends on, on whether you can draft them. So, all right. Moonlit Guidance, another druid card. Two mana, arcane spell. Discover a copy of a card in your deck. If you play it this turn, draw the original. Wow. This is really good, right? 
because I ideally, you know, when you when you're when you're discovering, you most likely will want to play it that turn. And even if you don't play it that turn, if it like ends up filling in your curve, then that's okay as well. I mean, it's much better played in like the mid game. So uh, obviously, if you, if you play if you pay two mana to discover a copy, that's not not so so great. But like it can be a, it can be insane value in the mid to late game. So I think it's good. I want to say like a three point five to four. I think four is probably fair. It seems it seems it seems like about a four. All right. Uh, on to is this Hunter? I'm assuming it's Hunter because the name of the card is Doggy Biscuit. So t two mana tradable. Give a minion plus two three. After you trade this, give a friendly minion rush. Well, this is just insane, right? I mean, maybe not insane, but really, really good. Because we do have a, a two mana plus two three card now, right? Mark of the Wild, I think, is is the card, right? That's plus two three. Um, and that one still gives taunt, I believe. So this one, instead of taunt, you get rush, but you have to have traded it. It, it is a little bit, a little bit weird though, because. Like the the plus two three buff is best in the early game, right? So it's like, when are you gonna want to? I guess if you draw it late, the the tradable here is probably more of like, oh, if it's not that impactful, you can get rid of it. Because I feel like if it's in your early hand, you you can just kind of always want it, right? In the late you use it for rush, right, right, right. You trade it and then hope it comes back, and then then the rush is always useful. Anyhow, it's good. It's very good. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking four again, just because it's a little bit weird to, um, it's, it's a little bit weird to get both rush and plus two, three. Like if, if you could do that easily, then I think it's like a 4.5, but my, my take is, is four is more appropriate. Okay. Moving on to the parrots. Nether Hunter card here. Four mana, three, four beast, monstrous parrot. Uh, battle cry, repeat the last friendly death rattle that triggered. Yeah, so, so these cards I, I've mentioned a little bit before, but um, I don't know, it's hard to give overall overall reviews for these, uh, for Arena. Because, you know, if you, if you play it and get really almost any death rattle, okay, except for the four mana, five, seven, uh, deal five to your hero, but I think that card rotates if I if I remember correctly. I think that that card is out. Um, but uh, you know, most of the most of the death rattles are pod of positive effects, and you're losing effectively plus one one on on stats on it uh, for the effect. So no, it doesn't trigger enemy death rattles. Repeat the last friendly death rattle that triggered this game. So uh, I don't know. I, I want to say it's it's above average, but I'm always like hopeful on cards like this. <laughs> Like I, I always dream that they're going to be really good, and then sometimes they're not. They're not so so good. I'm going to say it's a three point five. It might be kind of hard, or it might it might be kind of kind of hard to get that much value out of it. But like I, I see it more as like a mid to late game drop, and in that case, it should be should be decent. But if you have to tempo it, it's just terrible, right? A four mana three four. We know how bad that feels. So this might be a little bit high, but look. Sometimes you gotta believe. The thing called love. Okay. Defias Blastfisher, still on Hunter here. Five mana, three, two, pirate. Uh, battle cry, deal two damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each of your beasts. So I think this card is probably terrible for Rena. Um probably terrible wait am i wait chat saying i, I didn't say friendly R repeat the last friendly death rattle that triggered wait oh wait okay I, i'm i'm right right it, it's 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 friendly sorry i got distracted <laughs> did i get debated anyhow okay you guys troll me son of a okay defy is blast for sure i think it's bad i think it's bad right blast for sure will beat you okay so 
So, so I think this card is really good with Rat's Nest. Yeah, that was my thought. So that card will still be a thing. It's the four mana two two. Um, summon was it five one one beast when it dies. So if you play this on four, and then trade with that, that I think that's that's the idea of the card probably for constructed, right? But I don't know, man. I just don't. I don't think it's a consistent enough card to be um, to to like to rate highly. It, it just re it requires too too much too much combo stuff. And yeah, it's only a three two. I don't know. I just I just don't I don't see it. How about a five minute three two deal two bad but not unplayable? That oh that is true. It does deal two no matter what. So you don't need an effect for the first trigger. Hmm. Okay, I was going to go really low. Maybe it's a little bit better than... Like, two... It's, it is random. That's true. That is... Oh, that does make it worse. Uh, it's still pretty bad. It's still pretty bad. I think I'm going to go with the two. And it might be, like, lower than that, but... We'll go with the two. Okay. On to everyone's favorite class, Mage. Where are my Mage lovers? Hmm? Where are my mage lovers at? Uh, Deep Water Evoker. Four mana, three, four. Battlecry, draw spell, gain armor equal to its cost. It's a pirate. So this card, this card seems pretty good to me. So it's like, it's understated. And we, we've seen that now oftentimes you get card draw or discover and, and things aren't very understated. But I, I think it's okay because it, it gives you some some uh, defense with the, with the armor, right? Um, it does give your opponent some information about the card. But, you know, I, I think that's okay. I think getting the armor and... So a 3-4 that draws and gives you some health just seems good to me, right? You want stats for four drop? Well, again, I, this is a this is another card kind of similar to the parrot that we saw earlier, where it's a four drop that you don't really want to play on four. And, and there's a few cards that are like this. Um, and it's like if you have to play it on four, okay. But um, and, and even if you do have to play it on four, it gives you a spell which could help you come back and things. So I don't know. I, I think I think it's pretty good. The dungeoners are amazing. So so this so is this. Yeah, I mean the dungeon dungeoner card is pretty good in mage too, right? The three mana two three, and this one. Is you guaranteed armor. The trigger on the Dungeoneer, if you get a Frost Spell, is better than this effect, I would say. But that's rare. So. All right, I'm trying to think about it. I, like, a, like a four, maybe? 3.5? I think it's between a 3.5 and a, and a four. Um, I'm going to go four. I, I think it's pretty good. Four, it would be 4.5 if it was like a four, four. Four, four would be, would be, yeah, like, like, 4.5 in my opinion still think it's pretty good a lot of people are saying 3.5 that's close right it's you know I, I think i think it's a little better than that but that's fair all right i already clicked off the thing there we go oh no guys honestly i feel like not enough people have talked about this card arcane overflow five mana deal eight damage to an enemy minion and summon a remnant with stats equal to the excess damage like, I don't know. I just Maybe I just haven't been following it enough. But this card is effing busted. It's insanely busted. It's like a perfect arena card for, like, what it does. Like, it's ne basically never going to be a dead card. I mean, I, I kind of have some problems with this card because it's, like, too easy to use, right? It's like, no matter what, it's going to be good. Deal four, summon a four, four. Great. And, and I do have the stats right on that, right? Like, it gives you the same health and stats. So you deal two, you get a six, six. You deal four, you get a four, four, right? That kind of effect. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This card is just, it's its so nasty. I mean, and even, even if you think about it like a ping, right? Like if you use it to just five mana ping, you get a seven, seven on turn five. <laughs> like what the hell, dude? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Um, anyhow, yeah, this, this is a five for sure. Like one hundred percent. There's, I, I can't imagine this being anything, anything but a five. Uh, what are the stats of it? I don't know. That's a good question. Does anyone know what the stats are? Does do this? Uh, my guess would be the stats scale. So, like, if you if you 
get a 7-7 seven, seven at 7 cost, etc. Because normally they... I think that's normally how these kind of cards work. But does anyone know for sure how uh, how that works? What do, you, what do you think? Tokens work like that? Yeah, that's how I always remember. I, I, I don't know if I've seen anything like confirming it, but I think that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, with spell damage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like Jade Idols. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, similar, right? Okay. Anyhow, cards, cards insane. Slightly less insane. Uh, staying with Mage here. Gray Sage Parrot. Eight mana, six, six. Battle Cry. Repeat the last spell you've cast that costs five or more. Uh, I mean, again, so this is one of those cards where, in general, it's bad, but you'll still lose to it sometimes. Like, your opponent will play Flame Strike and then play this on the next turn. And then, you know, you'll complain. Well, if you're me, you'll complain. Uh, but, yeah, good with Flame Strike, Deep Freeze. Yeah, we get Deep Freeze back, which is another really good card with it. So, you know, in the right deck, you could try, right? Like, if you do hit with those cards, it's pretty insane. But, it, it, you know, if you're giving it an overall score, I think it's got to be below average. Um, I, I think, like, a 2 seems pretty fair to me. Just, you know, it's, I don't think it's consistent enough. All right. On to Paladin. I think this is another insanely busted card. Righteous Defense. And again, I mean, maybe people have been talking about this and I just haven't been following it, but this is another card that I looked at. I was like, what the, what the hell is this? Uh, three mana. Set a minion's attack and health to one. Give the stats it lost to a minion in your hand. Holy spell. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's it's similar. It's kind of similar to, to the Arcane Overflow in that it's just so easy to use because it's like, okay, you just get like a subdue effect. One more mana than subdue. And then for that one mana, you, you know, and you almost always use subdue on a big minion. For that one more mana, you get like... <laughs> plus five five or sometimes more right plus seven seven on on a minion like it's just going to end games like you use this you you get a swing on the board and sometimes you'll be able to play the same like the minion the same turn or like at least the next turn like it's it's just i don't know it's just it's just busted it, it's another five another five yep yep Okay. Uh, Sunwing Squawker. Still on, on Paladin. Another one of these, like, uh, parrot cards. So, uh, four mana, three, four. Beast tag. Battle cry. Repeat the last spell you've cast on a friendly minion on this. So much like the, the last parrot card, it, it's like, again, it's, a hard, it's hard to give an overall, um, you know, review to this one. One thing I will say is that it, it's... The last spell you've cast on a friendly minion. So it doesn't get messed up by like subdue or by this card, right? Like you use these on, on enemy minions. So it's not like it will mess you, you know, mess you up. Does it work with conviction? Um, it probably would work with conviction. Yeah. So you, if you, if you play conviction, this would become a three, three, right? Which isn't very good, but yeah, obviously like, you know, steed is insane with it. Uh, Kings would be insane with it. Even just like noble mail, I forget if noble mail will be a thing or not. Um, also, still you know pretty good. So, hand of dolls back too. Yeah, yeah. So go, go with all those cards. Um, again, I think it's I think it's a little bit better than average, just because the pop off potential is so disgusting. Um, I'm thinking like three point five, because I think the 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 lost stats again in this case are worth are worth it. Um, I, I hesitate to go, whoops, I, I put 4.5, much higher, but I, I think it's got a lot of potential. Do we punish it for being a beast? Oh, because of the, because of the new crawler card? Yeah, I hate that card. We'll get, <laughs> I mean, I do think we'll, we'll get to that card later. What, what chat's talking about is that there's a new card that eats beasts and there's a lot of beasts in the meta. So I think that card's going to be drafted very highly, and I hate it. I actually hope it's not in Arena. Um, that's my that's my two cents about it. I don't think that card belongs in Arena. Um, may, you know, you need effects like that for Constructed. It's kind of similar to, like, Dragon Maw Poacher. Like, it's just a card that 
anyhow, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there, but it is something to think about. I don't like the beast tag is a bad thing right now, I would say. Okay. Um, still on Paladin here. Wealth Redistributor. Five mana, two eight. Taunt, battle cry, swap the attack of the highest and lowest attack minion. Huh. So kind of an interesting one. So am I understanding this correctly, that it can swap with itself, right? I'm assuming that's how it works because a two is, is like low attack. So, you know, it's going to be kind of like another like really, yeah, okay. So it's, it's broken, right? Again, it's another broken card. Even if you just play it on like a, a Yeti. You get a four, a five mana four eight, and and you turn their four five into a, into a two five. It's it's just nutty, right? And it has taunt. Yeah, wait, wait, it has taunt too. Wait, why does this card have taunt? It doesn't need taunt. It would still be insane without taunt. Why? Why did they do that? <laughs> I mean, the answer is constructed, but why? Why? Why do they do that? And includes enemy minions, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole idea, right? You're, you're going to use this to negate a threat from your enemy and then gain power on it, right? So it's insane. Um, it's like a 4.5 or a 5. Mm, I think I'm going to go 4.5 on this one. It's a little bit... Like, it's a little more situational, right? Because, like, sometimes you'll have stuff on, on the board on your side. So... I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's more I don't think it's a five, but I, I think it is definitely a four point five. Pretty, pretty crazy. I, the idea is you're gonna use it, yeah, to, to, to negate a threat from the opponent, right? So Paladin's gonna have both this and uh that. So you're not, like they're gonna have answers for big minions now. It's kinda weird. Okay. Okay. Um, Defias Leper. Two mana, three, two. So we're on to Priest here. Sorry, I should say we're on to Priest. And I'm trying to catch quite a few messages. I read most of your messages, but I can't respond to all of them because normally with the reviews, I try to get through it fairly quickly. So we aren't here all night. Okay? But I love you all. If I don't read your message out, it's not that I don't love you. Uh, yeah, so Defias uh, Leper. Two mana, three, two, Pirate Tag. Battle Cry, if you're holding a Shadow Spell, deal two damage. So it's nuts, right? It's really good. Oftentimes, you'll just play a 2-mana 3-2. Like, the majority of the time. I, I know someone would have to run the numbers on how much, how many shadow spells we have. Guys, does anyone know, like, roughly? Like, with everything that's coming back? And I don't even know if they have shadow tags on old spells. Like, did they go back and add tags to old spells? Or how does that, how, like, how does that work? 1 million? I don't think it's 1 million. New shadow spell on the mini set? There's actually a lot. They, oh, they did? Okay, go back and add them. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's like, I would say it's between a 4 and a 4.5. Um, my guess is the, the effect won't go off that much, so I'm going to go with a 4. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 2 drops haven't really been power crept that much. Like a 2 mana 3, 2, 2 mana 2, 3 are still, like, premium. I shouldn't say premium, but that that's kind of the standard. So any any extra effect is good. Makes it makes it really high high rated, I would say. Okay, next priest card, Amulet of Undying, three mana, tradable. Resurrect one friendly death rattle minion. Upgrades when traded, and this is a shadow spell. So one question about this: Do we have confirmation about like how high can it be traded up to? Like, does it cap out at three or four or something, or can it be like traded into infinity? What? what seven it can actually go all the way up holy <laughs> i mean for arena that doesn't matter that much for constructed that's kind of crazy hmm. um i think this card's really good i think this card's really good like even if you just res one mini it's not that bad if you're like desperate and if you just res one it, it's it's not it's not that bad um and generally, you'll be able to get, I don't know, like, I feel like with this card, it's going to be, it's going to be, I, basically, I think, I'm trying to think of this way, I think you're going to be trading your tradable cards more now. Like, this card, 
if you ever have the free mana, I feel like you just chuck it into your deck. Because the upside of trading it and drawing it back is, is so big. So, you guys think it's poop? Really? You guys don't like this card? You don't think there's that many good death rattles? If, okay, you pay, you pay three mana and summon two death rattle minions. You don't think that's good? And you can, okay, and worst case, you can always just shuffle it to find a different card. One mana isn't that bad to shuffle. I think it's good. I think it's good. Might be worth for Claw Machine. So Claw Machine is actually rotating. So Claw Machine is out, which is one of the big ones. Um, I think it's I think it's above average. I'm thinking like 3.5 to 4. Maybe not broken, right? But I think it's above average. Shadow spell as well. Yeah, which makes a little, you know, some synergy with this, but. I'm okay with a 3.5 on this. I, I think it could be a 4, though. I think it, it just, you know, I'd have to go back and look and see how many death rattles we're getting back. Uh, because the thing is, like, priests like to play a long game, right? At least the way I draft priests. So I'll be happy to shuffle this multiple times, and when it eventually comes back in the late game, it's going to be nutty, right? Yeah, we do get statue back. That is one that comes back, yeah. So, and suspect is great, too. I don't know if ooze... Um, rotates a three drop i don't know if that one's rotating but i don't know i think 3.5 to 4 is kind of kind of where it's at oh man this this card okay copycat i have, I have a tendency to talk is which i know is bad for people on on uh on youtube so it's a three mana three four it's called copycat battle cry add a copy of the next card your opponent plays to your hand and it's also as the beast tag, which is probably a bad thing right now. But so, so it's just insane. Like it's just absolutely an insane card. Because because the thing is, something like this, it's a three four. So it's not like you're giving up stats. And sure, your opponent knows that you played it, right? <clears throat> but they still have to give you something, and it, so it will give you value no matter what. You're, they'll probably be able to play it to a decent amount, but um, it's still like this card is just just like insanely good. Like, I think it's an easy five, in my opinion. A three drop with fine stats that gives you a card guaranteed and your opponent has to play around, right? Like they, they know what it is. It's not like it's a, you know, they, they know what, what's happening, but that doesn't mean they always have a good way to play around it, so. Easy five for me. You guys are saying 4.5. You are underestimating the power of the... You hear me? It's probably annoying. Okay. Moving on to uh, moving on to Rogue. Black Water Cutlass. One mana, two, two weapon. Tradable. After you trade this, reduce the cost of a spell in your hand by one. I think people are sleeping on this card. I've I'm I'm not gonna mention names, but I've 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 lurked in some arena channels, and I'm, some people aren't, aren't too high on this card. And I understand why people aren't high on it, but I think they're wrong. Because the the people the reason people aren't high on it is because these kind of like cheap weapons tend to, for, for Rogue, in the past haven't been that great. Because like you play it on one, and then you kind of want a dagger on two, right? So it's like kind of awkward, and then, I don't know, you, you know, you get it later on, it's like, I don't really want a 2-2 two -two weapon at this stage, right? But the reason it's different is because it's tradable. And when you trade, you could potentially get some upside. I, I, I don't even like really pay attention to the text. I think the text will rarely matter. But it's like, okay, e even if you don't want it, like being able to trade it away makes a huge difference. And and playing this on turn one, like, or, or even, I mean, obviously, like oftentimes I think you will just equip it on turn one and, you know, you'll, you'll draft two drops. And having a two damage weapon on turn one is, is still nuts in arena. So I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I think this card's really good. Um, probably not like, I wouldn't say it's like, it's not like this card good, but I'd say it's a four. I'm, uh, I, I think I'm higher on this card than a lot of people. But uh, I just, I don't know. I, I think that the ability to trade it makes a huge difference. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I'm... Uh, if I'm right or wrong. Uh, 
Parlay. Is this still rogue? I think it is, right? Parlay, still rogue card. One mana. Swap this for a card in your opponent's deck. What? So, so I, I guess that means they get... So then they get this so they can do the same thing back to you, in theory. It's not going to happen because no one's going to draft it because it sucks. But, um... I guess, yeah, that's kind of cute. It's a one. You never draft this card. I, okay, I shouldn't say never. If you have two Omega shit cards and you're, you know, it's up against, maybe you take it for a chance to hire a good card from their deck, but you pretty much never. All right. Okay. Edwin's back, chat. Edwin is back. Four mana, four, four, pirate tag. Uh, Edwin Defias Kingpin. Battlecry, draw a card. If you play it this turn, gain plus two, plus two, and repeat this effect. You know what I just realized? You can actually draw multiple cards from this. And you guys are saying, yeah, obviously. But in my head, this was just, when I originally saw it, was it's a four mana, four, four, draw a card. And likely it becomes a 6-6 six, six when you draw it and play it. But if you have cheap cards, you could actually draw multiple cards, which is insane. Absolutely insane. And and even just, you know, like the thing about it is even if you just have to tempo it on four, it's not that bad. Right? It's a 4-4 four, four, and it gives you and you draw. Like that's not the ideal way to play it, right? You Ideally, you play this again, like in the, like the late game would be best. Mid game is okay. Like you drop a turn 10, there's a good chance you're going to get draw two and and get one buff like i think that's that's going to be the common scenario you play it on turn eight or nine you get a, a, a playable card you play it then the next card you can't play but it's still six six draw two it's insane um so yeah th this is this is uh, mm -hmm. 4.5 uh, i i hesitate to get to give this a five but i i feel like 4.5 is probably pretty fair it, it's between a 4.5 and a five um just a 4-4 four, four draw card would already be a 4, in my opinion. So I, I'd say from the effect... It might be a 5. The more I think about it, it's pretty insane. Well, we'll stick with 4.5, but yeah, it's great. It's great. All right, on to Brilliant Macaw. This is Shaman? Yeah, Shaman, okay. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, Beast Tag... Battle cry, repeat the last battle cry you played. Dread zero, five out of five. Thank you. I appreciate that. This card's great. See, I think this card, so... The multiple reasons why this card's really good. One, I would rather play a three mana three three than a four mana three four, right? So you compare it to some of the other parrot cards, and it's less of a stat hit. It still is bad stats on three these days, but... Um, yeah, and, and like there, there's also more battle cry cards, right? Like I'm not gonna go through and and, and count all the the shaman cards, but there, there's got to be way more. Actually, I think this card is harder to control. Yeah, I mean, I guess if there's like deal damage effects or things, it can be a little bit awkward where it's gonna go. Yeah, can we target with that? I would guess, do, do we have any confirmation about how that, how that works? Like, you play this after you play Fire Rally. Can you target it? I would assume you can, but I don't I don't know the answer to that. Because you can target with Fire Rally, so I'd assume so. Uh, oh, you can't? I assume it's random, really. Ooh. If it's random, based on how cards like Boulder work, it's probably random. Probably random. Mm. Okay, that makes it a little bit more awkward to use. But the thing is, you you know what you're getting with it. So, you know, you, if you had just played another battle cry that's that's not as good with it, then you don't play it, right? It's unplayable. It's random. I don't think so. I I think there's enough cards that just give you, give you stuff, right? Like draw a card or like target an enemy or something. So, I don't know. I, I think it's I think it's still pretty good. Um, 3.5. I'm going to go with a 3.5. Yeah, 
Is Yogg, and I think Yogg is out, luckily. I hate Yogg. Whenever Yogg is offered in my drafts, it's like a waste of a, a legendary spot. Card sucks, and you should never draft it. All right. On to Cookie. Cookie the Cook. Three mana. Two, three, Murloc. Lifesteal on the card. Death Rattle, equip a 2-3 Stirring Rod with Lifesteal. I just got to tell you guys, I don't know how many of you played WoW, but this is one of the cards that like actually gets me with the lore. I love this stuff. So Cookie's uh, Stirring Rod was like the best wand that you could get early on in WoW. I know some of you guys are like, what the hell cares? I care. Um, and I remember wanting to drop on my mage because it was really, it was really uh, like a big upgrade. So... Um, I'm excited about it being called the Stirring Rod. Anyhow, uh, I also, another thing I want to note about this card is that I thought originally it was it was a uh, battle cry. Until I saw this again right now, I thought Cookie was a battle cry card, which would make it way better. <laughs> like way, way, way better. Um, it's still good, but it's not as good as it would have been if it was a battle cry. Uh, how good is it? I think it's like a 4.5. What do you guys think? I, I, I feel like it's... I don't think it's quite a 5. Battle Cry, it's an easy 5. Uh, Death Rattle, I feel like it's like 4.5. It's still a ton... Like, the thing is, the life steal's relevant. Life still on it, and the, the weapon has, has life still. It's a lot of charges, so... I think it's, uh, I think it's 4.5. Stats are so bad. I don't think that matters that much, though, right? Because you're not playing it for the stats. It's just like a body, and then you get a weapon. That's really good. Like, I don't know. I, I think I think it's going to be great. Okay. When you get legendaries, would you pick this? I think, yeah, I think I'd pick this over most legendaries. There's some bad legendaries. <laughs> for sure. Okay. On to Sucker Hook. Four mana, three, six, pirate tag. At the end of your turn... Transform your weapon into one that costs one more. Hmm. So you play this on three, and then it dies, and then you get a swing in with it, and then, and then you play this. <laughs> in theory, <clears throat> I think this card's good. I think it's quite good. Cause okay, a four mana three six is. I don't know. I would say these days like a four mana three six is probably average for four drop. Maybe slightly above average, but I don't know. Um, but there's a little bit of upside, right? Because because generally with weapons, you swing once on the turn that you play them, and then you can play this to get like, you know, to, to get two charges or whatever. So I think it's pretty good. How often are you going to actually trigger it though? What what weapons are coming back, guys? Do we get? I think do we get bog spine knuckles back? I have to remember what all the weapons are that are, are returning. Oh, we get J. Claws back. Okay. Yeah, J. Claws is a very good weapon. Bog Spine is back. Okay. Although, I guess with Bog Spine, it's like, do you really want to lose the effect? <laughs> like, the effect's so insane, I almost wouldn't want to do it. Um, What's the highest cost weapon? I think seven. I don't know if there are any weapons that cost more than seven these days. Um, In dual class, the fact it even has more weapons, that's true. That's true. Uh, do you ever do a, squ a stat squish like they did with WoW to just a power creep? I don't think so. I'm guessing they're just going to keep power creeping forever. Anyhow, I think it's good. Uh, I'm going to say like a four. I'm going to go with like a four. 4.5 feels a little bit high to me just because I don't think it, you're going to have a weapon that often. And a four mana just plain three six is just fine. Like, I'll get, I'd say it's like a three, 3.5 for the stats and then a little bit of bump for the um, for the effect. An average is better than green skin. This card, it's better than green skin, I think, because of the stats. The effect, I think, is better from green skin. Mm, yeah, maybe. But the stats are much better on this, right? Okay. Shadow on the warlock. Shadow blade slinger. One mana, two one pirate. Battle cry, if you've taken damage this turn, uh, deal that much to an enemy minion. Uh, so wait, is, is Shadow Blast gone? 
Guys, is Shadow Blast dead? Like, is it rotating? Someone say yes. And those of you that are giving this a low rating, you're wrong. This card's really good. It's really good. Very, very, very good, in my opinion. Maybe. I can't remember. You tell us. This is your job. I, I think it I think it might be, because I don't think it was the most recent expansion, right? Like the most recent one we got Demonic Assault. Because with Shadow Blast, it would be nuts, right? I'm trying to think about the cards that we have coming back for like self-damage. I feel like we're losing a lot of the self-damage stuff, right? I think I think we are. So it's mostly gonna just be a tap and then deal two. But, oh, we get Abyssal back? Yeah, that's true, but that's an expensive combo. So, I, but it's still, I think tapping and just playing this is, is fine, right? You get a card. Unlicensed Apothecary is back. <laughs> new card also. Oh, we'll see it later. Which one's a new one with it? Oh, here. Battlecry and Deathrattle draw a spell. Your hero takes damage equal to its cost. Oh, I see. So that is you draw it with this card, and then... Um, you draw a spell with this card and then you can play that. I don't know. I still think it's good. I think it's above average. Uh, like a 3.5, 4, something like that. Maybe 3.5 is fair. Because it's only really nuts if you get, if you combo it, right? And how often do you do that? Oh, Chittering Tunnel is back. That's true. That's true. And, and oh, you know, another thing about this. we, we are, I'm not going to focus on this too much because dual class is only a week, but... If you do this, if you combo this with weapon classes, <laughs> it's going to be pretty insane, right? So like you, you, you hit into a, uh, into an 8-8 with your weapon and then you can play this to get an 8-8 or to, to deal 8, right? I mean, it did have to have two big things, but you see what I'm saying, right? Like there, there's some commas that'll probably be kind of cool with it. In summary, I'm going to give it a 3.5, 3.5 and like an overall rating, not, not talking about dual class. It's a little bit better in dual class. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Wicked Shipment. One mana, tradable. Summon two 1-1 one, one imps. Upgrades by two when traded. Pretty good, right? Uh, how do you know the rotation? You can do exclamation with upcoming sets in chat if you want to see it. They, they, they've announced it. Uh, it's good, right? It's like Lost in the Jungle or whatever on, on turn one, so you'd want to keep it. Um, if you draw it later and it's not upgraded, it's not a good card, you just you shuffle it away, right? So it's 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 very good. I feel like it's a four? I feel like it's like a four. I think most of the time you'll be playing it. Because even even like oh, just one mana for two one ones that, that also have the M tag or the the demon tag is just good. Seems good. All right, a hole breaker. Also, warlock four mana four three demon battle cry and death rattle draw a spell. Your hero takes damage equal to its cost. Discard scares me a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it, it's a lot of value. It's a ton of value, but um. Yeah, I mean, you could you could really you could likely take like eight ten damage from this thing, right? It's kind of spooky. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think it's I, I think the the risk with this card is a little bit too high, in my opinion. Like I'll tap, I'll take my two damage, cost two mana, and um, not have to worry too much about it. It's also a little understated. Like it's a, it's a four or three. It, it definitely seems like something that's going to be used with like the warlock quest and standard, right? Things like that. Do I have a cost? Bad stats? Uh, bad card? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's just too much. It's just too risky. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I think it's a below average card. How bad? Mm, I, I still think there's some decks that can make it work. Um, so, maybe like a two, I would say. But it's i i don't i don't think i'll draft it all that often well what i will say though is if you, if you have a deck where you didn't get expensive spells and you're offered this card late then it's really good all right you get like one or two cost you know you, you get um death coil or, or or sorry mortal coil or things like that that's fine right like then then you definitely take the the couple damage for it so you know there, there is some potential for it but 
a couple big spells in there, I'd be I'd be kind of uh, I'd be I'd be kind of scared. I, I just I, I'd have to go look and see how many big spells because because we are losing Demon Bolt, right? That is one thing. Cards way higher than a two a double demonic assault. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, if you have double demonic assault in your deck, right? I mean, my my argument would be. If I have double demonic assault in my deck, I don't even know if I want to take the four damage for it, right? Like my deck's already so insane. Why would I take the risk of of throwing a hole breaker into it to potentially just like kill me? <laughs> so I don't know. I I, I I don't like I also just don't like the stats. A four three, like it's traded up up by a three two. I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't seem good to me. I think I'd for there's a lot of reasons. So I'm gonna stick with the two. I can see people sit, make an argument for being a little higher, but I'm, I'm just not a big fan of it. All right, all right. On to warrior cards. Man the cannons. Deal three damage to a minion and one damage to all other minions. So here's chat saying, oh, you're being generous today. Oh, is everything going to be high rated? Yeah, well, what, what do you look at this card? What do you want me to do? Give it a one? Well, I don't know if it's that good. It actually hits my own stuff. So, you know, definitely low rated because of my own minions. And <laughs> So, yeah, it's insane. I mean, obviously, the, the, the most obvious comparison is to swipe, which is not really a card anymore. But um, it's, it's basically a two mana swipe. Uh, can't go face, right? But, uh, but you know, the, the cards like this, like it hitting your own minions rarely matters. If you just think about um, most of the warrior double-sided AoE, it's all good. So, yeah, I mean, this is an easy five. I, I don't think it's like, it's, it, it's, it's too much. It does way too much for two mana. Deal with like a medium-sized threat and like clean up the board. It's just stupid strong. Stupid, stupid strong. Okay. Uh, Defias Cannoneer. Three mana, three, three pirate tag. After your hero attacks, deal two damage to a random enemy twice. Hmm. So obviously this is like a pirate warrior card for constructed. Ah, man, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good in arena, to be honest. Because you need to have, a, you're going to have to have a weapon, right? Or, you know, the three, four uh battle cry deal two or whatever i like two damage twice is quite a bit of damage but three mana three threes are kind of unplayable these days i don't know i'm gonna say it's like i i want to say it's like below average this card because you can't even control the damage right so like you could play this and there could be three twos in your opponent's board and then it goes face twice and you're like well this sucks right would it be good in, in Rogue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for, so that is another good point. Again, I don't want to talk about dual class too much, but yeah, if you if you play dual class and you're Warrior Rogue, yeah, this is insane. If you can always have a weapon with it, it's insane, but you're just not going to have that a lot, in my opinion. So I think it's below average. Like a like a 2, 2.5 is what, what I'm thinking. Um, we can go, since I'm in a generous mood, we'll go 2.5. But it's I think it's definitely a below average card. Just just compared to the power level of other things right now. Okay. Blacksmithing hammer. Four mana, uh, five one weapon with tradable. After you trade this gain plus two durability. Hmm. It's a bit of an interesting card. Like so so. I feel like with this card, you're almost always going to want to trade it, right? Um, so, like, I think with the, the play style with well, this card will be, like, keep it in your opening hand, trade it on one, and then hope it comes back. Because if it comes back just once and you get a uh, an Arcanite Reaper with one extra charge for four mana, it's insane. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's definitely good. It's definitely good. I mean, the thing about it is... If you're really desperate and you just need to kill something, you still can. Or it can just be like basically a fireball, right? Um, so I, I think it's good. I, I think it's like it's it's versatile enough as being able to just be like a five damage finisher when you top deck it. Also, you can shuffle it early to have it come back for really good value or a lot of damage. Um, 
So I, th I think it's the, the tradable again but with this card makes a huge difference. Uh, what do I want to say? Four? Uh, the thing about it is like if you... I don't know how reliable it will be to toss it and then draw it back, right? Like if you have a lot of draw, it's great, but it's like... You're going to have to, a lot of times you're going to draw it and then you're going to send it back into your deck and it's like, ah, uh, I don't know. But if you do, it's insane, right? I'm okay. We can do a 3.5. I think that's fine. It's, it's, it does feel a little bit weird to, to use sometimes. Corsair cash can draw it. That's true. That's true. So you can like shuffle it away and then use that. Sure, sure. Oh, no. Okay, we're on to the neutrals. Uh, Galaka, Glutton. Three mana, two, three, pirate, battle cry, destroy a beast and gain, plus one, one. So this is my problem with this card. Let's just take a look. How many how many beasts we have? Oh, okay, there's not that many. Oh, maybe it's not that bad. Just kidding, there's a beast. 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 Uh, uh, beast. Any more? Uh, that transforms into a beast. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just hate cards like that. It reminds me a little bit of... Um, yeah, I just scroll a long way back down. It, it reminds me a little bit of um, of Dragon Maw Poacher type thing, right? And there's a lot of beasts that are coming back, right? 87 beasts in the coming rotation. Wait, did you actually calculate or count it up, Dan Fuller? Is that... Can we get a confirmation on that number? Can, can my mods run the stats and get back to me? Are you sure it's not 69? When I did my earlier calculations, it was 69. But I could be wrong. I could be biased. Um, Angoro is a beast expansion. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be... There are a lot coming back. From the library page, filter for beasts. And filter by arena rotation. Anyhow. The, the point is there's a lot of... There's a lot of... A, a lot of uh, beasts. And I think... I don't mean... Generally, it's like... Do you want to take these cards? But I think there's enough beasts that you want to take it, right? Rip Ultrasaur. <laughs> yeah, Monkasaur is going to be great. The fact it's so it's such a big swing for three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it kills something. It's, it, like if you compare it to Poacher, Poacher gives you an eight-eight rush, which is insane. This will remove something, and then also um, you know develop a three-four. So it's kind of similar type of like stuff. A hundred percent bigger for the crazy swing. Yeah, I think you will. I think you will. And you're going to be nervous playing beasts. I personally would like Blizzard to not include this in arena. I've mentioned it before. I think cards like this just... I see why they're printed. They're printed for constructed, you know? Because, like, if if the parrots become oppressive or whatever, you have an answer for it and you can tech it in. I totally get that. But I just don't think it's something that is healthy for arena, and I hope that they don't include it in arena. So what am I giving it for rating? I mean, it's high, right? The chance of the swing is just insane. Is it like a 4 or 4.5? I mean, it's not a 5, I would say, but... With the number of beasts coming back, it's going to hit a lot, right? We can give it a four, but again, I just, I don't, I don't like the card. I don't like it at all. Probably always pick it. Okay, fine. Let's go 4.5. Maybe if I say it's a 4.5. Wait, what if I go five? What if Blizzard is watching my review? And if I go five, then they're more likely to remove it. Because they're like, oh, Dreads, why would we remove it if it's only a... 4.5, well, because it's it's not healthy for the game. Okay, I'm going to stick with a 4.5, but... Yeah, I hate that card. Multicaster. 4 mana, 3, 4 pirate. Battle cry, draw a card for each different spell school you've cast this game. What? Mm. Okay, so what classes is, is this good with? Priest seems kind of good with it. Mage, maybe. <laughs> I 
I, Aris Futura, thank you for the 12 months, but I actually don't have alerts for the screen. <laughs> you thought you were going to disrupt everything. I mean, you kind of disrupted it because I thanked you, but yeah, I don't have any alerts on here. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. Um, Mage Druid Priest, Mage, Shaman, not Pally. Shaman is nature, fire a bit. I mean, even if you draw one, it's okay. I don't know. I Like, the problem is you need to have played a spell before you, you, you play the card. I'm not too high on this one, actually. And some spells... So Spells don't even have a school associated, right? Like, it, it, so if you play a spell that doesn't have a school associated with it, do you not get a draw? I'm guessing you don't, because it says for each different spell school, and if there's no school associated, then you, you don't get anything, right? I'm guessing coin would count. Coin would... Wait, is, is coin arcane or no? Coin has no school? Oh, okay, so coin doesn't count. Hmm. I'm picking a mage drawing one card's good enough for me. I mean, I'll pick it sometimes if I just need value and I can play it late. But I don't think I don't think this I rate this card like super highly. Maybe a three, maybe like a two point five. We we can go two point five. Yeah, I mean, again, like I'm giving an overall overall review. You guys are with Arena. You have to use your own brains a little bit. So if you get it late in the draft and you have a ton of different spell schools, then it's good, right? Then totally go for it. That's one of the good things about Arena. You have to change your picks based on your draft. But for me, giving an overall rating, I don't think it's that great. Basically. Okay. All right. Use what now? Oh, man. Mr. Smite. This is... So, six mana, six five pirate. Your pirates have charge. I will also say about lore, this is another one that... Uh, I remember going in the dead mines and killing this dude. I can't remember exactly what I want. Actually, I think since I mostly played casters, I think Mr. Smite didn't have shit for me. And it was just annoying because even if you have someone run you through dead mines, you still get stunned by this idiot. Like there's this like stun that you can't av avoid. And there's like a bunch of RP that goes on in the background. And it's just, it's just like, ah, just let me kill it. Okay, anyhow, back to the card uh, and rant. Uh, it's good. It's good for arena, right? So it itself is a pirate, so it has charge. So it's a six six damage for six mana that can go face, which, you know, it can be a finisher. Um, I'm sure in, in standard they'll combo it with, uh, like, the two, three that gains attack of the weapon and stuff for, like, tons of tons of reach. Uh, but in general, it's going to be a six mana, six, five charge. And, you know, you might use it to free kill or whatever, which is, which is fine. Um, hmm. How good is it? I don't think it's like a five. I want to say it's like 4.5. Like the reach is obviously nice and there's not a lot of this type of uh, type of reach cards for arena. But I, I, you know, it's not like, I don't know. It doesn't strike me as a, as a, as a five card. You guys think like a four? Yeah. And, and six damage for six man isn't like insane, insane. I'm okay with four. We can do four. I was thinking either four or four point five, but uh, for for constructed, dude, this is going to be nutty. <laughs> oh god, you're going to die to it. I'll probably play some pirate warrior actually with this. I always I always enjoyed pirate warrior. I probably played pirate slash dragon warrior. I used to play that like combo deck a while ago. It's fun times. Quick game, smork it. Don't um me. I see you guys umming me. Don't do it. Okay. Okay. Prepare the mold. Prepare the mold. Goliath Sneed's Masterpiece. Eight mana. Eight, eight. Mech tag. Battle cry. Fire five rockets at enemy minions that deal two damage each. You pick the targets. So I'm assuming like you play it and then like arrows come out and you can like put the arrows places. So what's going to happen is, is someone, I think Perk or someone mentioned in Discord, you're going to know you're getting f by this card before it even happens, which is going to be even more triggering. Like you're going to see them like hovering each of your minions one by one and then you'll know, oh, guess I lost. <laughs> um, and, and you might say, ah, oh, but dreads, it's a legendary. You're not going to see it that much. And yeah, that might be true, except for the fact it's a fucking mech. Do you know what a fucking mech means? It means Deep Run Engineer is going to give you this card. 
And Deep Run does not rotate. I believe that was the most recent expansion, right? So it's going to come out on turn seven. Turn seven. It's it's insanely broken. Like, insanely. You don't see it until you see it? Oh, okay. You have to play it, then your opponent sees it, then you choose? Okay. All right. Is that even... Is that better? So you, they'll play it, and you'll be like, oh, I lost. And then you watch them slowly, like, hover, and like, oh, do I want to kill this thing first? Or uh, do I want to... Um, so, yeah. I mean, this is a, the easiest five ever. And I don't give fives to, like, expensive cards like this all that, that often. Um... But it's one of the, in my opinion, it's one of the best cards ever printed for Arena. Like, I would say Ysera, like, the current state of Ysera is still, I would say significantly better than this card. But, like, it's just, it's AoE on a stick, and it can be, or single target removal on a stick. Like, it's just, it's never going to be bad. And, it, man, like, why is it an 8-8? Like, this card would still be great if it had, like, um... If it had twin tyrant stats, right? Like we're getting twin tyrant back. A four eight, like four eight, still be insane. You pick it every time. It's not a win condition though. You don't think this is a win condition? <laughs> you don't think play a card that's play an eight eight that kills all of your opponent's shit is a win condition? I'm letting you know this is a hundred percent a win condition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. It's absolutely busted. Yeah, it doesn't hit your own stuff. It, yeah, it's just, yeah. Anyhow, it's a five. It's a way better version of, tw of Twin Tyrant, and it's going to be generated from Deep Run. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, chat. And you're probably all of your favorite card. Probably the best card for content of the, uh, <laughs> of the, uh, of the mini set maddest bomber eight mana nine eight battle cry deal 12 damage randomly split among all other characters <laughs> i actually think this card's really good like it's it, you know it's it's like if it is basically if this card was fair or not fair but more more fair if, if this card wasn't in, insanely broken, it had some randomness to it, is this card. Because, you know, you'll play it when you're a little bit behind. Um, you know, throw some of your minions into your opponent's minions. And then, uh, you know, just, just give yourself the highest odds for it to work well, right? Sure, sometimes it will hit your face a bunch. And then you'll get annoyed. Um, that would probably happen often. But it, it's just good. I mean... It, it, it's a it's a big card that does something immediately when it's played so uh yeah i think it's i think it's really good it's a, i think it's like a man i think it's like a 4.5 i think it's that good really like you can also use it if you're pushing for lethal you know like i, don't, I think it's really good <laughs> Um, it's worse if you're ahead, right? But I don't know. I think it's I think it's I think it's gonna be really good. This might be a little optimistic, but I'm gonna believe. And it's gonna be great content, so that's the most important thing, right? When when it does the worst possible situation. <laughs> On turn eight, cards are so much other problem will clear much. Yeah, but like, you know, if you're completely off the board, sure, but if you can throw your minions in and set up decent trades, I think it'll be okay. All right. Well, that's it, guys. That's it. So I guess my general thoughts about the mini set is a lot of really good arena cards, right? I mean, if you just look at my ratings overall, you know, well above average cards. Um, a lot of cards that do stuff when when they're played. Uh, there are obviously some are going to be a little bit worse and a little bit less consistent, but um, overall, I think I think there's just you know quite a few quite a few good cards, and I mean it's a big shakeup. So for anyone who doesn't know. I don't know what the heck are, are th those are down there. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, you get we get th the new mini set and a big arena rotation as well. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very uh, very different um, come Tuesday. So I'm I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Arena will be hopefully feeling uh, feeling fresh again. Yeah, and dual class right, and dual class, all all of that together. 
Do you guys do you guys want to do the thing where we, we guess what are going to be the good dual class combos? We've now seen the mini set cards. We know what is coming back for sets. What what's going to be the nuts? I feel like the answer is always Demon Hunter at the beginning, right? I really hope Demon Hunter isn't insanely broken um, because we only have a week of dual class. So if it's broken, it might like ruin <laughs> all of dual class. But Demon Hunter is getting good cards and they're getting good cards coming back too. So I feel like Demon Hunter second is probably going to be pretty, pretty damn strong. Warlock Hero Power plus X. Paladin plus anything. Paladin Warlock. You guys think Paladin's going to be really good? Yeah, I guess Paladin gets a lot of good cards back from Angora, right? They don't adjust anything. It's Warlock, especially Paladin Warrior. Or, oh, it's anything plus Warlock. Okay, plus... I, I think there... My guess is there will be some adjustments. Normally, things are changed a bit when, when, when they do these kind of rotations. So, should I start a run and get a free ticket or is that not a thing anymore? I think it's still a thing. Yeah, I think you sh if you want, if you care about getting a free run, you can leave a, a, a run at two losses. Do you see the graduation of names? Mad Bomber, Mattis Bomber, Mattis Bomber? Yeah, yeah. Mad, Matter, Mattis. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so you guys like Paladin a lot. We'll see. Warrior first is going to be strong like always? Probably. Because we get um, we get Ganarg back, right? Ganarg is back, and Ganar and Warrior got some really good cards. So, yeah, Warrior first is almost always the play, at least in the past. Because partially because you don't want the hero power second, right? You can also do the same thing with duels. Start a run, you get back a free ticket. Yeah, but then I have to play duels. I mean, I could do that, but then I, I think I'm good. I think I have enough gold, bro. I'll pass. But good to know if you guys if you guys do want to play a little bit of uh <laughs> of duels. How about rogue? So generally rogue is good in, in dual class. Um like rogue second is normally pretty good. I don't know. I don't the, the rogue cards didn't stand out to me a ton. And I'm trying to remember. I I, I don't feel like Ungoro. I, I we get Vile Spine back, right? I'm trying to remember what else we get for, for Rogue the set. Um, I mean, if Paladin is good, then then Rogue will be pretty good. But I don't know if it's something that really like stands out for me. I would say the two man three four rush. Yeah, we get that card. Yeah, the the one if you have the dual class thing. Yeah, Vile Spine dies to Beast Eating Pirate. <laughs> I mean, I'll be playing everything because I I just enjoy dual class and trying different stuff. So. You know, like day one, day two, day three. I mean, we'll, we'll probably just be experimenting most of dual class. If it really is only a week, like we'll just try as much as we can and not worry too much about um, about what the what the best way is to win. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching my United Stormen mini set review. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Ayaya. Thank you. Thank you. If you're watching on Twitch, I love you too. Okay.